We have a special guest today, Rudy Wetzel. We're going to talk about fabricating and rock crawling, two of our favorite topics. This is going to be fun. So, Rudy, who is Rudy Wetzel? Well, um, a lot of people might know my dad better, Matt Wetzel with Matt's Off-Road Recovery on YouTube. I'm a Canadian-American that has a lot of fun fabricating in my shop and then breaking the stuff and then rebuilding it. That's awesome. Wait, well, I guess, when, when did you get the bug for, uh, for fabricating? Um, man, I, I gotta say, it's gonna start at like eight years old, pulling apart my RC cars and building something out of popsicle sticks and hot glue to, you know, just wild creation. And from there, you know, as soon as I started getting more into vehicles, obviously that, that, that love shifted into that. But yeah, I started really early on just working with my hands and figuring stuff out. What was your, uh, what was your first vehicle you had? And how, and how old were you? So the f- my first vehicle, it's kind of a funny story. So since my dad owns a, like a towing yard, mm-hmm. he had a lot of vehicles to choose from. And at the time, he had a Dodge Durango with a bad transmission. So in order to drive it, I had to fix it. I didn't get to the fixing part before, uh, before the next tow yard over had a Jeep Cherokee that was stolen, stripped of all its parts, and the guy uh, never, never came back for it, didn't want it, sold it to the towing yard, and the tow, tow guy is like, I don't want this. So I, I bought it for 900 bucks and kind of slowly put it back together, and, and that was what I kind of drove through what little bit of high school I did do. So That's awesome. Until it died <laughs> <laughs> so Cher- the, the the jeep cherokee's been uh, i mean it's still the platform you're you're using today oh yeah absolutely and so what's your what's your favorite part of of that as a platform for rock crawling so in the beginning it was cost that was my favorite part they were cheap and you could find parts for them everywhere um and then just that they're they kind of are were considered a junk vehicle, so people didn't care what you did to it. Whatever you did made them cooler than they already were, <laughs> and that and that they could just handle the abuse. And I, when uh, people ask me like, um, what vehicle to get started with rock crawling? When people ask me what vehicle is like a good good platform to start with, like it goes back to Jeeps and and kind of the smaller trucks and all that stuff that are already good at off-roading stock and from there you can slowly build them up if you're going to just start out and build an all-out rock crawler you can start with anything because you're replacing all the parts anyway but if you're just getting into it like stock platform of the cherokee is 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 really hard to beat they, they really got it down personally i think you know I've, I've heard questions like hey can i turn my rav4 into a rock crawler can i turn my you know can i turn my minivan into a rock crawler? yes you can turn anything into a rock crawler but what is the cost, the time, the effort? What are you going to have to do to it? What's the end goal? Like, yeah, do we- you want just a weekend warrior rig, or do you want something that, like, it's going to do level nine trails? So right. Gonna, yeah. Not all platforms starting out are created equal at all, and the, I think the Cherokee is just a great blank canvas yeah. that you know that people don't get too offended if you <laughs> really go hog wild with it. Right. Right. So what are what what's the favorite thing about your your rig right now? What? Um, man, I really like the tons and forties. That, that may, it makes things easy. It's kind of the cheat code on a on a Cherokee. It's already the right wheelbase, and uh, just keep it low. I started with thirty threes, and then from there I went straight to forties. I never wow. spent any time on thirty fives or thirty sevens, any thirty nines even. Just straight to forty. So, just you might as well go all the way, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was already, I, with with axle swaps, you're limited anyway. And we had a set of Super Duty axles laying in the yard. So I was going to use those. And stock, they can handle a 40. So might as well make it do a 40. So Yeah. Well, well how you, you've obviously changed the wheelbase. What, what is the original wheelbase of the Cherokee? And where are you at now? Shoot, I don't, I don't know what the original wheelbase is, but... I'm at about 97 inches now outside okay. of the wheel. Or you're talking about outside width, right? Or you're talking about yeah, from from hub to hub, basically. Yeah, front, front yeah. axle to back axle. Oh, front axle to back axle. That is, I think I'm at 109. Okay, for for that wheelbase. Oh, that's that's a great 
That's a great yeah. length, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the questions that I have for you is, um, you know, obviously you're you're younger, right? Um, what uh, what challenges does that pose to you in in the world that you that, that you're involved with, if if it does at all? Um, or maybe it's an advantage. There are definitely advantages and disadvantages to it. Um, I would. I'm going to start with the disadvantages, um, in, in that people will will doubt my ability or my thoughts or my ideas because I I do lack experience. I have a good amount of experience for my age, but I'm still have only been doing this for a couple of years. So yeah. so when I when I want to express a new idea, people tend to doubt if it will work, and oftentimes it doesn't, and that's that's part of the process. they learning. And then, uh, and then the advantages are, of it are I, I am one of the youngest people in, in this market, you know, being 23 years old. And I have, have my own YouTube channel, my own shop that I have my own projects. And, and to have, I guess, on the other end of the spectrum, people looking up to what I do, people that are older than me that I look up to, mm-hmm. seeing what I'm doing and just cheering me on, you know. And yeah. I, got, I got a lot left to, yeah. to, to put it together. And you you mentioned earlier that uh, growing up around kind of a tow a tow truck, you know, business with your dad. Um, what would you say? Did did you were you mostly self taught? That's kind of what it sounds like. You kind of just dove into everything and just kind of taught yourself. Because I know that's kind of an overwhelming thing to think about the mechanic side, the fabbing side. But it's kind of cool to watch you create what you do. Yeah, I mean, it's just problem solving. If you're if you're good at puzzles. That's all it is. You just got to figure out the solution. And, yeah. and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, try again. Try again, yeah. There's, <laughs> you might lose a couple dollars trying again. <laughs> but, but in the end, I mean, it either works or it doesn't. So, so what's, your, what's your plans going forward? I know that you're, you, you've just changed location, yeah. right? You're still in Hurricane or in the St. George yeah, area. Yeah. area. So what's your immediate plans? What are, you, what are you going into next? So... Um, This upcoming year, I really want to get into, I guess, building an ultra four car, off-road racing, high-speed desert stuff. Sweet. And uh, I've got got a lot of, I guess, creative ideas with that, with the build I'm going to do. And then I just want to keep keep, uh, building in my shop, I guess, projects that I want to, I want to help people with their builds that wouldn't normally have the opportunity, you know? whether whether their job or it's money just because because people who have money can pay any shop to build yeah. whatever they want them to build right um but it, it's people that work the nine to five and you know kind of don't have the opportunity to build the rig they want that that i want to help and you know it's it's fun to do they yeah. they have more creative projects anyway than well <laughs> yeah and, they, and they, they'll come with their own ideas and, and really fun things I, I had another question too going back to the ultra four are you going to do a solid axle front and back or are you going to do independent front suspension what's your um, what class are you hoping to do so i'm hoping to put it in a 4500 class which is um supposed to be a stock body and then a original style suspension so so the truck i'm using was originally solid axle so i'll have to stick with solid axle and then, um, and then pretty much from there, it's open rules. I, I'm supposed to retain some of the frame. Motor's supposed to be in the front. They can't have a mid engine or rear engine. Yeah. Um, and then it's just supposed to look like look like a truck, look like the truck I'm building. So yeah, I like what you said about uh, helping others um, that maybe wouldn't get the help. Do you see that turning into like a larger fab shop? Do you? You're in more integrating that into YouTube. What do you think that What do you think that looks like? Yeah, I'm more integrating it into YouTube, um, just because it's. I find a lot of the projects that that, I guess, some of the people I know are into. A lot of people watching YouTube and stuff are also interested, and in, and just kind of they're just different builds off the wall a little bit. So uh, I know later this year I'll be building a, a Mini Cooper. I'll be making a diesel Mini Cooper Truggy. Where did that idea come from? I like making iconic vehicles. My goal is to make content that anybody can sit down and watch. Like like if, if your mom walks in the room yeah. and uh, she sees it on, she, she might not be interested, she might not care about the topic, but if she walks in the room, she could sit down and enjoy an episode, you know, be able to follow along and not not be lost with too many technical terms or things like that. And I'm not trying to teach people 
how to do what I do. I'm just filming what I do. Yeah, just <laughs> so, having fun. Yeah, your so. channel is kind of cool because, like, not only that, that people can understand it, but really anybody can watch it. Even kids can watch it and learn, yeah. learn stuff and enjoy it. It's kind of a cool, clean channel where you can get excitement and learn at the same time. So, yeah, yeah. Props to you for doing that, man. Well, thanks. Yeah. And then I guess going back to the I- iconic vehicles, I obviously got heavy into fabricating vehicles on uh, on my dad's Morver, which started with a Corvair wagon, kind of the last vehicle you would expect. Right. And uh, and now it's one of the most iconic Corvairs in the world. And uh, and Mini Cooper, everybody, even yeah. people not into cars, know what a Mini Cooper yeah, everybody is. Everybody does. So, and there's. So you say it's going to be a diesel? Yeah. yeah. With 40s and one tons? Uh, 37s. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's almost a 40. <laughs> it, it, it'll, it could fit 40s. <laughs> sure. No, oh, that's awesome. Well, I, and that's. I think that's what's fun is, is your channel's. It's fun to watch. You look, like you, you, you look like you're enjoying yourself and you're having fun. And, and I think that that's where. I mean, I think a lot of YouTube creators get lost on that fact that they're that they're a lot more, oh, I, I, I just say interested in the, in the teaching aspect of it or the content or the technical aspect of it. And then they're not getting the views. Yeah. So, and you can kind of see that on my channel. I, I don't post on a schedule if I'm not happy with a video or a video is just not where I want it. I, I'm not afraid to hold on to it until it is. Um, and and I also just don't have the team to, to put out a lot of pr- product, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So, because uh, um, up until, I guess, this week, it's kind of just been me in the shop. So, and ho- hoping to get into the flow a little bit more. And, but, yeah, having fun is, is, is the biggest part of it. Like, so, I, you know, go ahead. So, you mentioned not having a team. Like, so what, what does that look like? Like, what would have been your biggest challenges getting... I mean, you have a lot of followers, obviously. Yeah. What's yeah. been your biggest challenge to get that up and going and make it what you want? So just, you know, you're over everything. So I'm the editor. I'm the one making the decisions. I have to get a business license. I have yeah. to, I have to, you know, pay the bills of the shop, find a shop. I have to make sure all the tools are there and, and enough parts are there for the project. So I don't have like a pro, a project manager I have to make sure the thumbnails are made and just everything. I have to answer comments on, on videos and, and I enjoy doing all that, but, but some of that stuff that I'm not good at takes, takes a lot of time and is really draining for, for me. Um, so, and then also in the shop, I, I could have all the parts laid out, but I'm still just one guy. Yeah. So I might take a day to strip an axle down if I had a help. Now we can have the axle stripped down, and then the next day, like, I can be prepping the vehicle, and we can just put it in. So instead of taking four days, it's now a two-day project. Yeah. So just, I guess, managing my time has been the biggest struggle because there's not enough of it. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people think, oh, it's, so a lot of people, I, I would assume, think that they can just jump on and start a YouTube channel. It doesn't sound like that's the case, right? I mean, they well, could, but you, it's... you absolutely can. It's just how determined are you, though? Like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of work. So, how many, how, how many hours would you say a day you put into, into your craft and your business? Every, every, every waking minute, I go to bed sometimes, just lying awake at night thinking about what I'm going to do the next day. Yeah. So, like, I, social life, like this is it. You guys are my social life. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome! I love it. That's great. We but, like hanging out with you. Yeah, yeah. But so it's just. I don't know. If I have more time, I put more time into it. I do. Yeah. I just very love, passionate about it. Yeah, I love what I do, and it's kind of a it's kind of a challenge, you know, like being able to progress at this. I don't I don't really need a break from it because this is what I'd rather be doing anyway. If I try to sit down, it's like I got to go do that thing, and I just go do it. So no breaks. <laughs> yeah, that's a good message to everybody out there. It's like if you want to do something, you just you go do it, and yeah, and make it happen. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but... Oh, yeah. If, if you're passionate about it, it you'll, f- you'll figure it out. You'll make it happen. One, cool. one of the things that I like about your channel, not only are you doing fabrication, but you also do a lot of rescues as well, too. And mm-hmm. so 
What, do you have any any rescues that are coming up in any of videos that that haven't aired yet? I have a couple that probably won't ever air because of <laughs> GoPro footage failing. Oh no! Well, oh, tell us yeah. about some of those. Um, well, last year near my shop there was a car. A guy. He does. He's like a traveling nurse, but he goes to people's houses to do checkups on them and everything. And and where my shop is, it's it's kind of out there, and some of the houses are really out there, and there's yeah. that deep clay and mud. And he goes out in his little Hyundai Sonata, mm-hmm. and uh, there's only two ways in, uh-huh. and both are horrible. Like He saw the first way. He's like, I can't do that. But he saw on the map there's another way. Uh-huh. So he's like, I'll just go that way. And he was committed. He had to go check yeah. up on this person. And so we just went for it, and... Uh, it, it got stuck like right perfectly in the middle and it was it was bad it was muddy enough and bad enough that that even like the Rudicon struggled like oh. I don't know how he got in there well, it's greasy but, here yeah, like the yeah. mud is just it's clay it's yeah. greasy it's different than anywhere else in the world oh yeah yeah so you know we we hooked up to him I didn't even put anybody in the vehicle because the steering wheel didn't work anyway <laughs> we just Pulled him out. He he. While he was waiting for me, he was able to walk to the house and and do his job. And then, by the time he was done, I was able to to get him out just just fine. So, so you. I'm I'm assuming you were using a kinetic rope with that. So yeah. it was, I. So were you just fighting for traction or? Yeah, I mean, it was just I was just like I could I could stop and uh, like leave it and drive, and my all four tires would just be spinning there, and I could. <sighs> be checking on him and it wasn't until I got some wheel speed that I actually started moving yeah it's like and a chihuahua then, on on tile you know yeah. just trying to you know yeah, <laughs> get yeah. to the dog bowl so <laughs> I mean yeah and and the, I don't even I don't even own a, like use a strap for any recoveries because it, I mean the, the kinetic energy rope just works like it, there's no downside to using it over a, a strap you know right. unless unless you needed a tree saver but right that's for sure different yeah, you've you've probably used them more than I would say most people. You've had a lot of experience with kinetic ropes. I've had yeah, quite quite a bit. What's been the biggest thing that you got that you've recovered or that you've been a part of? Like, what's been the the biggest one that comes to mind? I'm sure there's bigger, but uh, it was like this Ford 450 pulling a gooseneck. It, for whatever reason, he was in the lake at Sand Hollow, like oh boy. like you know, 20 feet out in the water. Like, why why is he out there? Uh, he gave me an answer. The answer was that he didn't want to drive in the soft sand, and he thought he'd get better traction in the lake. I don't know. Anyway, so with that recovery, we ended up having three Jeeps hooked up to him. Um, and uh, I was the first one because I was my Jeep was the fastest, so I could get out of the way for the next Jeep uh-huh. while we were all hooked together as a train. And, uh, I mean, it probably took us eight hours to move it. 50 yards to get it to the road but i remember we started it was definitely daytime when we started and it was definitely nighttime by the wow. time we got to the road wow and then uh, i didn't let up when i got to the pavement and i i pretzel the drive shaft and everything holy but, cow but yeah yeah was the customer like waiting the whole were they waiting there the whole time oh yeah they're, they're like i don't know how you're gonna do this but like good luck <laughs> and uh some of the park staff were like well we have a we have a like a grader. We can bring it down, and but it was so slow that it, it like and it was on the other end of the park, so they, they they didn't get it there in time. But and I doubt that would have done much anyway. It, they're not great in the sand. So when you when when you showed up um, with your jeeps and just a couple ropes to the was the customer like there's just no way you guys are gonna do this. Like what was his reaction? Every, every time he's he's like he's like well like, glad you're here, but. It's not going to do anything. So, <laughs> and then and then it works. And they're they're like, like, how did you do that? And it's like, the magic's the rope. That's really what it is. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's fun to see. I, I I love I love it when people finally get it and they see like, wow, the Yankum rope can get her done. And and uh, oh, yeah. it's just it's it's impressive stuff. It's fun watching you guys um, do the recoveries that you're doing with them. So. Oh, they're fun to do with the, with the rope, with a strap or a chain. It, yeah, it's dangerous. It's super dangerous. I've seen a lot of chains broken, and it's not yeah. not good. But when a rope breaks, it's not too bad. Not too bad. So, 
If a rope breaks, it's usually my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, thank you very much for coming on the show. This was a blast. Um, let's go wheel in some time. We brought our uh, our uh, crappy Jeep, and <laughs> and uh, we'll probably break it, so you might get a phone call from me. All right. <laughs> yeah, we've appreciated the time today. Uh, man, your channel is awesome. Um, for those of, uh, of you out there who have not seen Rudy's content, you definitely need to check him out. You'll learn a ton on fabbing, recovery, entertainment. Uh, where can everybody go to find you on your channels? Yeah, so uh, pretty much Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, Rudy's Adventure and Design. If you're trying to find me in person, find me at my shop up in Hilldale. Usually pretty upset about something happening in the shop that, that I shouldn't leave. <laughs> but, uh, so but you yeah. can have visitors every once in a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, visitors are, are absolutely welcome. I love, I love meeting people in person that, cool. that actually watch and enjoy what I do. Awesome. We appreciate you. Thanks, thanks for your uh, thanks for your time. I'll have to do this again. Oh yeah, this for sure. Yeah, it's awesome. it was a pleasure. Thank you guys. Thanks, thanks Rudy.